Don't you just love it when we just let God be in control and let the Holy Spirit do what he was called to do? Come on, brother. Yeah, there's a bunch of hugging going on in here and praying for one another. I, I, that is the church. Amen. They didn't riot. They weren't rebels. They prayed. Amen. That's the power. They prayed. Come on. A king puts Peter in jail, for goodness sake. And he prayed. And they didn't get on Facebook and talk nasty about the king. They didn't make fun of his height. They didn't make fun of his hairy legs. I mean, maybe they were hairy. I don't know. <laughs> right? They didn't mock him. Right? They didn't burn things. They didn't loot. They didn't threaten. They went where they were supposed to go. They got into the presence of God together. And the Bible says that heaven was so moved that God, who could have just spoke and the gates would have opened and Peter could have got out. No, God wanted to touch earth with heaven, so he sent an angel. Peter woke up and the angel was like, hey, glad to know you, pal. I'm about to let you loose. Amen. You know what's so funny? These people pray for Peter to get out, and when Peter shows up at the prayer meeting, they don't believe it's him. Amen. Right? Yeah. It's kind of where we are today. Oh, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying, and then God moves. They're like, no, not yet, God. You couldn't have done it yet. That was too fast. I didn't get done saying everything that I wanted to say, and God's like, because I don't need you to say anything, just shut up. People are like, God would say that? He has shut the mouths of lions, and he'll shut yours if he needs to. But guys, let me tell you, the only reason he wants us to be still is because he wants us to recognize the power on this planet that he's given us, the Holy Spirit. When you welcome the Holy Spirit, you have welcomed God into the room. And it's time for the church to remember who is the power in this place? And it is not the devourer, as you were saying, Swain. The Bible says he roars like a lion, but he is not a lion. He's not. He's a phony. He's a fake. He has to borrow things like a snake. He had to borrow his outfit. Right? And by the way, didn't we just hear, uh, the borrower is slave to the lender. I'm not groveling to the enemy. Uh-uh. No. You put your foot on his head and you crush it in the name of Jesus. We need to do that. And, and let me tell you, Sister Lisa, being transparent, we all need to be that transparent. We need to take that risk. Which, oh, by the way, at the end of the day, it's not a risk. It's a revelation. Amen. It's a revelation that the church needs to hear and then say they actually believe it. Yeah. I've never seen my sister in that wheelchair. Never. I've always spoken like she walks because in my eyes she does walk. I don't need it to be done physically to know that God has already done it. Amen. But I'm excited about this. And let me tell you, it wasn't just a ploy to get you to sign up for the class. She's serious. She's getting out of that chair. Hallelujah. And I'm in agreement with you there, mighty warrior princess. Amen. Which reminds me, guys, I want to encourage you. Come tonight. Come tonight. First of all, we're going to break bread together. And let me tell you, when you have a church potluck, it's going to get crazy up in this place. Amen. We're going to be eating people's favorite fruit, foods. And let me tell you, uh, let me tell you, there ain't nothing like a church potluck. They actually teach a class that teaches pastors how to eat at potlucks. <laughs> I'm not joking. It's a class that I had to take to learn how I behave myself at a potluck. Guys, let me just tell you right now, 
But that's just the beginning. Because right after the potluck, we're going to get into some praise and worship. Amen. And we have been praying for weeks now. And let me just tell you, the Lord has been speaking through Sister Kara. Her and I have had several meetings. We've been praying, praying. Let me tell you, the list has changed, and then it changed again, and then it changed again, and it changed again. But it's ready. Amen. Come ready. And don't worry about the clock. Don't worry about the time. Let me tell you, when you get lost in the presence of God, it's going to feel like you're on vacation. I'm just telling you, you will feel like you're on that. You won't be tired. Let me tell you, you'll be more tired if you don't come. Amen. Can I speak that? Is that okay for me to speak that? I'm telling you that you will find restoration, regeneration, refreshment. Because when we call to the kingdom of God and praise him and worship him and give him glory, heaven touches earth. I don't know what God's got planned tonight, but I don't want to miss it. That's right. So I'm going to be here. That's right. And if no one else shows up, I don't care. I'm going to put on that music. Kevin and I, we will just go nuts in this place. I'm just saying. Guys, this is a big deal. And let me just tell you, this was just a warm-up this morning. He's just warming you up for tonight. Portals are going to be open because God wants heaven to touch you. And then he wants heaven to pour through you so you can go touch somebody else. What am I saying? Invite someone tonight. Don't just come. Go find. And if you say, well, Pastor, I don't have anyone to invite. Go out there. There's somebody that doesn't have anywhere to go and is hungry. Bring him here. God will bless you for that. Because God wants to move for all of us. Amen? So I'm just telling you right now, you do not want to miss what's going to go on in this place tonight. It's going to be lit up. People are going to think that there's a Hollywood premiere going on because they're going to see the lights of heaven moving all over the place. I'm just telling you, this roof's coming off. It's coming off. We'll put it back. Okay? But it's coming off tonight because we're not letting anything get in the way. Amen. I need this. You need this. Amen. If you've been crying out for this, well, then show up. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? If you've been crying out and saying, well, Pastor, I don't, well, then show up. Because God's going to show up. That's right. And he's trying to tell you right now, he's like, look, if I can do this in the morning, just watch what I'm going to do tonight. Amen. Amen. So we just want to encourage you to come and be a part of the service tonight. You don't, again, want to miss it. I want to tell you, I've already reached out to four pastors in this area. I asked them to come join us. And yesterday, I got a call from all of them, all saying, do we need the RSBP? What do we need to bring? And we may have some other pastors from other churches here with us tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Because God told me that he was going to bring us together. That's what he told me. So he told me, George, do this. You do this, and then this is who you're inviting. And I said, okay. And I invited them. And let me just tell you, a week went by, and I didn't hear a word. And I'm not going to lie to you. I had a moment of panic, like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> they probably read that text and went, oh, George has lost his mind. <laughs> and God came in and says, George, when are you going to let me just do what I need to do, and you do what I tell you to do, and don't worry about it. Amen. I said, okay, I'm not going to worry about it. And then yesterday afternoon, boop. All right, God. All right, God. So if they're here tonight, great. If not, that's all right. I'm just going to continue to be obedient to the Lord. That's right. All right? But God is moving in a mighty way. And how is he moving? Through his spirit. Yeah. Right? We've been in this series. We're wrapping it up today, guys. I'm looking at the clock. I may go over a few minutes, but guys, just would you let the Lord and the spirit move today? Yeah. Because we are talking about the power of the Holy Spirit today. Amen. We talk about what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, that's a big deal, right? But then we talked about the Holy Spirit's presence both in the beginning and in the now. Then last Sunday we talked about his purpose, what he's here for. And today we finish up by talking about his power. Why? Because when God sends his spirit, things happen. Remember a guy named Samson? 
He wasn't perfect, was he? He was a mess. But when the Spirit of God fell upon him, he killed the most Philistines that any man could have ever killed. Amen. Come on, Mark. Come on, right? Amen. And you know why David killed ten thousands? Because the Spirit of God was upon him. Yeah. Right? And then when Daniel served, not one, not two, not three, but four kings who had him in captivity, right? And they threw his friends in a fire. They threw him in a lion's den. And did anything happen to them? Absolutely. The Spirit of God fell upon them, and no weapon formed against them prospered. Right? But let me tell you the thing, the, the person that excites me the most, Jesus. Because when the Spirit of God fell upon him, he was healing the blind, the sick, the lame. He, broken marriages were being healed. Amen. Sons and daughters were coming home. Demons were having to flee. Sick people were made whole. They just didn't get... Holy Spirit. I am fired up. I've been fired up since 1 o'clock this morning. God woke me at 1 o'clock because he was excited. I said, God, it's 1 o'clock. He said, I know. So go in your office so you don't bother Laura. I want her to get her sleep, but I got to talk to you. And at 6 o'clock this morning, I walked out of my office. I was like, is it time for church yet? Because I got to get there. Guys, I'm just... Jesus, the man, was dead. He'd been crucified. His blood had been spilt. He was a dead body. Amen. But the Holy Spirit wasn't finished. Amen. The Holy Spirit raised him up. Amen. That a stone couldn't even stand the presence. It had to roll away. People are saying, Pastor, why are you yelling? Because I am overflowing right now because I am convinced. I am convinced that nothing, that nothing, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. We are more than conquerors because God loves us. And I've been holding it in too long. And now I'm shouting it. And people are like, are you angry? No. I'm just shouting because I want the enemy to know that he can't touch me. He can't hurt me. He can't touch my wife. He can't hurt her. He can't touch my children or hurt them. He can't touch or harm my grandchildren. He can't touch us. And if I can make that declaration for the family, I'm going to make that declaration for the church. Amen. Whatever you're wrestling with, whatever you're fighting with, let it go. God didn't create you to fight grizzlies. Get out of the cage. Stop fighting these things. You don't need to fight. The Lord fights for us. He's not against us. I believe that with all my heart. That's why we're doing what we're doing. I didn't come here to make other people happy in this valley. I came here because God wanted to do something, and he was looking for a yes. And I said, God, I will do it. I have no idea what I'm doing. I feel clueless sometimes. God, I just feel like all I'm doing is stumbling and bumbling. But if you want me here, then I am here. Come on. And here we are. We're having church today. Amen. We've given out over 250 food bags in the last two months. Over 250. Let me just say this to you right now, just so you know. These bags cost between 8 and $9 a bag. Your tithes and your offerings pay for those. Three, at least three meals. There's some people who are very gifted and can pull a week's worth out of that, right? 
Guys, I'm just telling you, God is moving. Are we seeing it? You'll only see it through the power of the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I will move as quickly as possible, but I don't want us leaving here today without us knowing the power of the Holy Spirit this morning. Amen. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. I'll be going through different translations. I'll let you know so you kind of know where I'm at, but we're starting with 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 through 18. And the word of God says, he has enabled us to be ministers of his new covenant. There is not an incapable child of God. There is not a disabled child of God. There is not a depressed child of God. There is not a lost child of God. There is just children of God. And he has enabled you to be a minister of this new covenant, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is a covenant not of written laws, but of the Spirit. See, you don't need now to read the Ten Commandments to know what you need to follow. You now have the Spirit in you who opens your eyes to behold wonderful things out of God's Word every day. The old written covenant ends in death, but under the new covenant, the Spirit gives life. Did you hear that? It gives life. See, we spent too much time fighting abortion, talking about death. We gave the enemy a platform without realizing we were giving him a platform. But all of a sudden, God began to move in his people and said, if you're going to defeat death, you don't talk about it. You talk about life. And you don't just talk about any life. You talk about life eternal. Eternal life in Jesus' name. Amen? And when we speak eternal life, things happen. <clears throat> the dead rise up. The blind see again. You even feel better. Right? And it's not medicine, and it's not magic. It's the Spirit of God doing what he was sent to do, and now you are allowing him to do it. I love when we were praying, and Sister Mary Ann said, empty yourselves, empty yourselves, empty yourselves. Look, the Holy Spirit is not going to work through your dirty laundry. Just get rid of it. So he can flow in you and then through you in Jesus' name. He did that today. I felt that in the room. You said it, Kara. People got sealed. It was like a fresh anointing for everybody in this room today. I'm just telling you right now, you came here today, you got a fresh anointing, and you're going to walk out of here, look at your bank account, and you didn't pay a penny for it. I go to a movie and popcorn, and that's 50 bucks. Right? And I take a risk on the movie, which half the time is not any good, right? And then I'm looking at my popcorn bucket wishing I would have got the extra large. <laughs> I want more popcorn. Let me tell you, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, you don't have to worry about more because he gives in abundance. Amen. I'm here speaking truth today. This is what the word of God is saying. It gives life. How much more abundant than life itself. Amen? And it says the old way with laws etched in stone. I just love this. That they were etched in in stone. And let me just tell you right now, if we were living by the law, we'd be throwing stones at each other. But we're not. Because God's word is not a rock to be thrown at someone. It's a rock to stand on. Because he is the rock in Jesus' name. Amen? And it says in here that it, it led to death, though it began with such glory that the people of Israel could not bear to look at Moses' face, for his face shone with the glory of God, even through though the brightness was already fading away. Here's the thing. Guys, I don't want something that fades away. And God told me, what? What will never pass away? What's that? His words will never, will never pass away. 
So the words I'm speaking to you right now are the same words that Peter spoke, same words Jesus spoke, same words the prophets spoke, the same works that men like David and Daniel spoke, like Joseph and Jacob. Come on, right? Because God don't have to change up his word. His word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Brother Mark, thank you for that on Friday. Guys, I'm just, I, I, I'm just telling you, what do you want? And how bad do you want it? I'm just saying to you right now, if your life on this earth is replacing the kingdom of God, then you're missing it. And you'll be one of those that will stand before the Lord on a day that you thought was rapture, and he's going to say to you, I never knew you. Why? Because God doesn't deserve your 10%. He needs your 100%. And why not? What are we worried about? I'm just telling you right now, what are we worried Well, Pastor, you don't understand. I've got this to do, and I've got that to do, and all these things to do, and I'm just so worried about everything. Well, I've got a word for you. Why don't you just stop, be still, and let God lead and guide your steps, and that might take care of the worrying. I'm just saying, right? Because he doesn't give us a spirit of fear or worry or doubt. He says he gets us a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. That means because of the Holy Spirit, this guy can sleep through the night. Unless God wakes him up at 1 o'clock in the morning and says, I'm excited, can I talk to you? Uh, yes, Lord, absolutely. Amen, right? Come on. That's, all right there, Tony. That's right. Look at this. Shouldn't we expect far greater glory under the new way now that the Holy Spirit is giving life? God says expect more. Expect more. My spirit is not a clown. It is not a mascot. My spirit is power. And it's the greatest power. Why? Because the same power that raised up Jesus from the dead is now the power available to you and to me in Jesus' name. If the old way which brings condemnation was glorious, how much more glorious is the new way which makes us right with God? See, in the old way, we were trying to be right with God. In the new way, I am right with God because of the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, which cleanses me from all sin. I was thanking him for that this morning. I'm like, Lord, thank you that even before my confession, you've already broken out the soap and you're already cleansing me. I love what David said. David said, he said, wash me with hyssop. Amen. I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be white. Amen. No. So I'm running around today. I feel pretty clean. But it's because I can confess my sins and know that he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins, to cleanse me from all unrighteousness through the Spirit. Come on. Every day. Now look at this. In fact, that first glory was not glorious um, at, at uh, I'm sorry here. In fact, that first glory was not glorious at all compared with the overwhelming glory of the new way. So if the old way, which has been replaced, was glorious, how much more glorious is the, is the new, which remains forever? Let me tell you something right now. There's not a one of you in this room that if someone walked up to you and said, here's these keys, and you went, what are those? They're keys to a new car. There's not one person in this room that would say, oh, thank you, but no. I like my Pinto. <laughs> She's a beautiful brown. She's got the mahogany, nahogany, what, fake pleather seating that sticks to me when it gets hot. <laughs> she goes 45 miles per hour before she starts shaking. <laughs> She's my ride. Yes! Why do we settle for that, guys? God wants his children to walk around in newness. In newness! He doesn't want you to be depressed. He doesn't want you to be overwhelmed. He doesn't want you to be defeated. I heard someone say that today. I am not defeated. No, you are not. 
because you serve a God who is victorious. Right? Look at this. Since this new way gives us such confidence, we can now be very bold. We are not like Moses who put a veil over his face so the people of Israel would not see his glory even though it was destined to fade away. But the people's minds, because of that, were hardened. And to this day, whenever the old covenant is being read, the same veil covers their minds so they cannot understand the truth. And this veil can be removed only, only, only by believing in Jesus. So no way can be removed, right? And I love what he says here. Guys, stop trying to be Moses. Amen. Stop trying to be Abraham. Stop trying to be Ruth. Stop trying to be Esther. Look, God created them to be who they were in their time, but he created you to be who you are for this time. Amen. I'm just saying. I hear people who come to me and they'll say, you know, Pastor, I've just been reading this book and, and studied uh, Joseph, and man, I just, I just... I want to be a Joseph. And I asked him this one question. What's your name? Rick. Rick, I got news for you. You can't be a Joseph. Amen. Well, Pastor, you're supposed to encourage me. Buckle up, buttercup. Amen. Be Rick. Be Rick. Be who God named you to be and be all that God wants you to be through the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom! Liberty. It's all over this room. And guys, when I leave here, it stays here. People come here Monday through Friday, and I've had people walk in here and say, there's something about this room. Yeah, this is a room of freedom. This is a room of peace. This is a room of joy. This is a room of rest and relaxation. This is a room where you can come dream if you need to. Why? Because we believed it and prayed it in. Mondays and Fridays, there's a few people who come and pray, and like Laura said, if you can't come, that's fine. Pray with us. But let me tell you something right now. This place is covered in your prayers. And because of that, it's filled with the Spirit of God. So that when people come in here broken, they leave here going, I don't know why, I just don't feel as bad as I was before. And the secret is down with the mints you put on my desk. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know they're, they're good mints. Let me just tell you that right now. Yeah, absolutely. But guys, do you get what God is speaking to us about right now. So I'm going to continue here. It just says here, so all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. I can't help when I look at Marianne and smile because she is beaming with years and years and years and years of walking and talking with God. I just think of the song, Marianne, when I'm, when, when I'm around you. I come to the garden alone. All of the dew is still on the roses. And the voice I hear calling on my ear. The Son of God disposes. Sing it, church. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that i am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known can i get a hallelujah and amen in this place. Hallelujah. This is our God who wants to be with us. Why? So that we can reflect who he is to others. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. What I'm telling you is when the Holy Spirit walks into your life, you can't help but be changed. I love what Paul said in Romans 15, 13, talking about a guy that got changed. You know what I'm talking about? 
I'm talking about a man who had blood all over his clothes, and all of a sudden Jesus said, hey, what are you doing, Paul? I'm going to, or Saul, let me tell you, I'm going to change your name. It's going to be Paul, and you're going to serve me. And when Paul looked down, he wasn't wearing bloody clothes anymore. He was wearing a robe of righteousness. And he wrote this verse, Romans 15, 13, the God of hope will fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power, hear it now, the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what was missing. We thought it was programs. We thought it wasn't big enough sanctuaries and, b and big enough coffee shops. We didn't think that we were doing enough barbecues and bake sales. Guys, can I just say this to you right now? God is not about earth's business. He is about his business, Amen. kingdom business. Amen. I'm just saying right now, whatever you're doing, let it be for the kingdom and the glory of God. Do it for him but also do it with the help of the Holy Spirit because that's what he's here for. So very quickly, guys, very quickly, I just want to touch on three points. I'm going to give you verses. I'm not going to read them all. I'll give you um, the scriptures, though, so you can have them. First of all, the power of the Holy Spirit gives life. Anyone in here want to say amen to that? The reason that you're alive today is because of the Holy Spirit. You were flatlined. The doctor had already put a toe tag on you saying, pronounced dead. They had turned off the lights. They had walked out of the room. And then the Spirit of God walked in. And the Spirit of God said, uh-uh, you are not dead. Today's going to be your day of salvation. Rise up the same way in which Jesus rose up when he heard me calling him and saying, it is time for you, son of God, to rise and come home. Mm. You may say, Pastor, I haven't heard that voice yet. You need to just listen. Because the voice never stops asking. The voice never stops calling. The Holy Spirit is so faithful in doing what God has called them to do. Let me tell you, from the beginning, it says in Genesis 1, 2, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. From the beginning, the Spirit of God was bringing life even before God was speaking it. He was preparing the way like John the Baptist. He was calling out the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. And look what God has done and what he's still doing. Amen. Jeremiah 37, 37, 1 through 14. I have to read it. I'm sorry. I, pause. I have to read because it's a story about dry bones. Can I share a story about dry bones with you? Because I'm going to tell you right now, today somebody's dry bones got massaged and blood started flowing in it again. And whatever disease was trying to attach itself, the blood washed it away. I'm calling you healed in Jesus' name. Physically, emotionally, spiritually, I'm saying, I'm declaring, you are healed because when we ask for it, God does it. Or two or more believe. I was the first one to believe. And there was a room full of people believing with me, so I think a bunch of healing just happened. But there were some dry bones in here today, and let me tell you, you're going to go home, and you're like, man, I'm not creaking anymore. I feel alive. My knees don't hurt. My elbows don't hurt. My neck don't hurt. That doctor's report on the table, it's just a blur to me now. I don't even think I'm going to keep it. I'm going to run it through a shredder in Jesus' name because God's already done it. The hand of the Lord was upon me. Hallelujah. I could stop right there and just say, we'll see you tonight. Hallelujah. I love it. The hand of the Lord is upon me, and it carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. Can I just say this to you right now? You will never go anywhere without the spirit. 
You will never go anywhere without the Spirit. Here's what I love. I love this quote. It's good. It's a good quote. It says that, the, that God will not take you where the grace of God cannot keep you, right? It's good. But I'm going to give you something better. See, the grace of God is just the beginning. Understand that it's the spirit with power Amen. that is going to remain with you through it all, through it all, through it all. Amen. It's not just about grace. It's about the power of grace. And where does the grace get its power? From the spirit of God. I'm just saying, we need to get excited about the spirit because nobody has ever defeated him and no one ever will. Never, 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 never. It's time to give your cancer to the Holy Spirit. It's time to give your, your rheumatoid arthritis. It's time to give away your weary mind. It's time away to give away that anxiety, fear, depression, addiction, whatever it is. Give it to the Holy Spirit. He knows what to do with it. Trust what God said he would do. Come on. Start trusting God. Hey. You know, Mary Ann was a little quiet there. I was like, come on. Amen. Come on. Guys, let me just tell you something right now. We're not a joke and we're not playing church. Amen. The church should be rising up. Yes. It's our time. Yes. It's our time. Yes. The Holy Spirit's been waiting and waiting and waiting. And you're going, well, just one more thing. Whatever that thing is, give it to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stand up, be steadfast, unmovable, and abound in the work of God today. Come on. We haven't even got to the valley yet. Check this out. Right? And it, he set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Guys, can I tell you, when I got here to Los Lunas, I felt the dryness. And I'm not talking about the temperature. I'm talking when I got up on Los Lunas Mountain, I knew that there was an issue that this, this land was arid and dry and it had been, been for a long time because it had been cursed. And people were living out the curse. People were resigning contracts with their incantations and their ignorance because they didn't know some of the things they were doing were, were actually inviting these spirits to stay. These contracts were being extended. I'm here to tell you today that we're going to use our praise and worship tonight to cancel contracts in this valley. We are going to... What, here is the word for you today. You are going to go out today and you are going to remove the enemy from his place. The word, here it is, eviction. Amen. But let me tell you why you're going to do it. Because of Holy Spirit conviction. Amen. Don't go just evicting just because, because you'll get in trouble. Yeah. Let me tell you, demons are not toys to play with. They're not yeah. cute little yellow guys on the TV screen. They are dangerous. And they will put a hurt on you if you don't go in there with God's presence, the blood of Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're in a real battle. We are in a real war. But I will tell you, we have all the components to have victory. I'm speaking it and telling you today, through the Holy Spirit conviction, begin to evict the enemy from where he needs to be evicted from. Some of you, your situations have been affected because you haven't given the enemy notice. I am giving you permission through the word of God because what I'm about to tell you happens to these dry bones. You're going to go to the enemy and say, you no longer have any place here. In the name of Jesus, I'm covered by the blood, so don't even try to scare me with any of your Halloween costumes because that's not going to work. Why? Because God is for me. Come on. Come on, Mark. Eviction notices are now being sealed. Kara. 
Some people are going to come tonight and they're going to get set free. Amen. Some contracts are going to get ripped up. And we're going to, let me tell you, we're not going to just rip them up. We're going to shred them and then set them on fire. Never to be signed again in Jesus' name. Right? I'm just telling you. And, and man, Lord, I know I'm not, but, ah! Oh. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. See, that's been the problem with the church. Well, God, you know. Lord, if it be your will that you heal this person, <laughs> you know what you want. What? Why would God want to heal anybody when you walk in with that kind of attitude? Right? When Jesus got to the tomb of Lazarus, did he say, Dear Lord, you know that he's a dear friend of mine. You know that I love him. I don't want to upset you, God. If you want him dead, then dead he shall stay. I just want to make sure, God, that before I ask you that you know, just know that if you decide that when I speak and he doesn't come out of the tomb, boy, am I glad my Bible don't read that way. Maybe yours does, but mine don't. Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. That's what he said. I just told someone's cancer to go away. And I'm calling you out to come forth. You are going to get a clean bill of health from a doctor who's going to scratch his head and say, I can't figure you out. You have it, then you don't. You have it, then you don't. You have it, then you don't. Let me tell you, the only reason that you're dealing with this doctor, and I don't know who you are, but this is just Holy Spirit is showing me something. The only reason you're dealing with this doctor in this way is because God is using you to testify to this doctor that at some point he's going to stop trying to use medicine and he's going to confess before God and his day of salvation will come and he will hang up his doctor's robe and he will start serving God the way he was called to. God's using you in a wonderful way. You are a testimony, so don't be afraid. He healed you once. He's going to heal you again. I'm just telling you right now, because he's about healing you. If we get depressed, then we get defeated. But let me tell you this right now. David said, there will come a day when I will see the righteous. And what will they be doing? They will not be forsaken. They will be alive and well. It is that time. It is that time, church. God has had to clean us up. We looked terrible when he came back. We looked terrible. I told somebody, I got a vision one night while I was sleeping. God says, do you want to see the condition of my church? I said, okay, God. And he showed me a woman who was in a bathrobe, curlers in her hair. She hadn't shaved her armpits. I'm not kidding. It was horrible. Horrible. She had on a uh, 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 fingernail p polish, and they were all different colors on both on her feet and on her fingers. And 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 then on her feet, she had a slipper and a sandal. She didn't even have the same shoes. And here was the scary part: she was smoking a camel. <laughs> she had a, one of those camel cigarettes hanging out of her mouth. And I went, Lord, what is going on? And God says, You forgot who the groom is. May we remember who our groom is Amen. and why he loves us. He says, I'm going to clean her up because my bride's going to be without spot or wrinkle. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He's bringing life. He's bringing life. He's bringing life. And so he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. 
Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Let me tell you something right now. If you are in a place where you're like, Pastor, I'm a little apprehensive, take this scripture verse and go talk to someone who is dying and watch what happens. Because he, Jeremiah, spoke the words of God. These are the words of God. If you've got a situation and that situation is desperate for God, speak these words. Amen. Why? Because this is what happens. He said, I will lay new sinew upon you, will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. That's why we're alive, so that we can know who our God is. Yeah. That's why he brings life. That's why we talk life. That's why we should be speaking over people. Like Mark said, it's time to lay hands. Amen. Let me tell you something. The power is not in your hands. Your hands are just obedient vessels that say, Holy Spirit, come through me. Amen. I'm just telling you right now, God is no respecter of persons. Anyone in this room can lay hands on somebody. Amen. You may say, well, pastor, I'm still a little apprehensive. Well, then put it on yourself. Amen. Just lay the hands on you and say these words and watch what God will do in Jesus' name, right? As I continue, so I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinew and the flesh had came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then I said, uh, then he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind. By the way, do you know who the wind is? Yeah. Holy Spirit. Now I want you to call them out. I want you to recognize that I'm not done yet. Yeah, they're being healed and revived, but there's more. And so he said, say to wind, thus said the Lord God, come the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. Guys, let me tell you, it's one thing to be alive. It's another thing to live. See, I'm alive, but I need to live. You need to live. Look, this earth is not my home. I'm just a passing through. But while I'm on this earth, I have a mission to do. I need to tell people that there is life, everlasting life for them. And not only will it make them alive, but it will cause them to live for God. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived. They stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. And, I said, and then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, our hope is lost, we are cut off. Therefore prophesied I, and said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves. Did you hear that? He's going to open graves and cause them to come up out of their graves and then bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. Some of us need to go home and we need to look, look around the yard because you're going to find caskets that God took you out of. You're not defeated and you're not dead. And the remnants of what God did for you, literally he's gonna show you when you go home. I'm just telling you right now, God wants to open our eyes to behold wonderful things. And let me tell you, there's nothing more wonderful than a casket that has my name on it, but I'm not in it in Jesus' name. Can I get an amen? Come on. Can I get an amen in this house tonight? Come on. And I shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live. And I shall place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and performed it, saith the Lord. So the power of the Holy Spirit, what? Gives life. The power of the Holy Spirit gives boldness. It gives boldness. Write this verse down. I'm not going to uh, read this one. Acts 4. Act, or you know what, actually, let me see here. No, write this one down. Hebrews 4, Hebrews 4, 14 through 16. 
I want you to go and read that verse. And then I want to encourage you, after you do, come back and tell me what God said to you. Share it with me this week. But put it under this, the power of the Holy Spirit gives boldness. What I want to read is out of Acts 4. Acts 4, verses 23 through 31, I'll read quickly. When they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they heard it, they lifted their voice together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in it, who through the mouth of our father David, your servant, said, by the Holy Spirit, why did the Gentiles rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. For truly in the city they were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your, your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. It doesn't say here to quote your friend from Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Oh, there's a lot of great quotes out there, but let me tell you something right now. Without the word of God, there would be no quotes. Amen. If you want to see your situation change, don't look for a quote. Get in the word and then start speaking the word. This is what he, they were saying. We are called to speak the word. Help us to do it with boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal. And signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. He wants to heal. He wants to show signs and wonders. But he's looking for people who will ask and be bold enough to do it. Amen. And when they had prayed. Sometimes people, even myself, I'll be in a situation. I'll say, Lord, I'm coming out now. And the Lord will say, well, George, you haven't prayed. Lord, I'm talking to you. No, George, you're complaining to me. That's not praying. Prayer starts with praise. When you start praising me, I'll start listening. Guys, we need to change up our language and our attitudes. Because you think you're praying, but you're really not. You're just complaining. God's not here to hear you whine. He's here to be the new wine. Right? Come on, you like that. Come on. I have to give credit to the Holy Spirit. That wasn't me. That's the Holy Spirit. But it's the truth, right? He wants to do these things. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. That's what I believe God's going to do tonight. They're going to get bold up in here. I'm not talking about pride and arrogance. I'm talking about boldness. Some people are going to let go of that uh, tailgate they've been holding on to that's been dragging them at 105 miles an hour and them going, if I let go, I'm going to die. Well, you're on your way to die anyway. So just let go. I'm just telling you right now that God wants to give us boldness to speak his word. We get so caught up in the gifts. Well, what is my gift? Your gift is your salvation. Your gift is that God loves you. Your gift is that Jesus shed his blood for you. Your gift is that the spirit wants to dwell in you and use you. Right? So what does it matter if that happens while you clean bathrooms? Well, I'll just, I, I, I just want to get on a platform. Then stand on the toilet <laughs> and declare that God is Lord Amen. of your life. You with me, church? Amen. That's where it started for me. That's what it did. It started when I went to a pastor and I said, well, I want to do great things for God. And he said, show up on Saturday. And I hadn't even given my life to God yet. I was just trying to get my wife off my back because she was all like, you just need to be a holy man. And I just said, you just need to be a quiet wife. She said, I might be quiet if you'd be holy. 
So I went and talked to the preacher, and I said, I need to get my wife off my back. And I said, so here's the deal. What do I need to do to be holy? He said, show up Saturday morning, 8 o'clock. I got there at 8 o'clock in the morning, and he handed me a toilet brush and a mop. He said, the bathrooms need to be cleaned. I'm like, I need to be a holy man. He says, son, you need to be cleaned first. Amen. And maybe when you start cleaning the toilet, you'll realize that you need to be clean. And that didn't work. I got done with that, and then he said, well, that didn't work. Then you're going to dust all the pews. Then I had to vacuum the whole sanctuary. Then I had to wash all the windows. The next thing I knew, it was 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and I was tired, and I was fed up. And he looked at me and he said, come back next Saturday and we'll keep working at it. I didn't go back the next Saturday and it took another eight years before I finally gave my life to the Lord. But guys, let me tell you this right now. God did get a hold of me. Amen, amen. And the one thing he has taught me is that, the, that a platform in a church is just a platform. Yes, I should be ready to preach and teach the gospel from anywhere. Amen? amen? amen. We all need that in Jesus' name. Write these verses down, Ephesians 6, 18 through 20. Ephesians 6, 18 through 20. <coughs> I'll just read verse 18. Praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. Guys, if you're going to pray, make sure the spirit's in the closet with you. I'm just saying because you're going to need the spirit to help you talk to your God. He knows how to. Let him help you. I close here very quickly. Thank you for staying, church. Thank you for letting me go over a little bit. The power of the Holy Spirit brings freedom. The power of the Holy Spirit brings freedom. Romans 8, 10 through 16. Romans 8, 10 through 16. I'm reading from the Message Bible, and I'll read quickly. But for you who welcome him in whom he dwells, even though you still experience all the limitations of sin, you yourself experience life on God's terms. I love that. Yeah. My life is on God's terms. The enemy has no say-so in it whatsoever. Ah. None. He has no say-so. Can I just tell you this right now? How can a man who's going to hell himself have a say-so on whether or not I go to hell? Right? If we really think about that, how can I let a man who's going there tell me? It's like me letting a man who's never been married tell me how to be married. It doesn't work. There's no power there, right? Once again, God disarming our enemy. It stands to reason, doesn't it, that if the alive and present God who raised Jesus from the dead moves into your life, he'll do the same thing in you that he did in Jesus, bringing you alive to himself. When God lives and breathes in you, and he does as surely as he did in Jesus, you are delivered from the dead life. Yeah. It says immediately, immediately I am delivered from the dead life. So I am not a Christian looking for freedom. I am a son of God that is free in Jesus' name. And not only am I free, but I am free indeed. Time for us guys to realize how alive we really are. With the spirit living in you, your body will be as alive as Christ. So don't you see that we don't owe this old do-it-yourself life one red cent? I don't owe this earth anything. I don't. But I owe God everything. Maybe for some of us today, it's time that we re-enlist into God's army. And you will if you remember that you're free. That's why you re-enlist. That's why you were in God's army in the first place, because he's the one that sets you free. Amen? There's nothing in it for us, nothing at all. The best thing to do is give it a decent burial and get on with your new life. I love that. Get on with your new life. People are coming in like, oh. And let me tell you, I, I, I fall for tears. Right, babe? The kids come. They start giving me the tears. And Laura's like, oh, great. Don't fall for that. I'm like, I can't help it. Well, here's the thing. I've actually gotten better the older I've gotten. She's gotten worse. Now she's the one. She's all like, babe, I, 
I'm like, wait, you were the strong one. Now we don't stand a chance. And now we have eight grandchildren on top of that. Ooh, forget it. Forget it. But here it is. It just says here that get on with your life. God's spirit beckons. He beckoned this morning. I don't know about you, but I barely got through that third song. I was weeping. Because I could hear the Holy Spirit calling to all of us. And saying, it's time. Story. Can I go ahead and do that this morning? Holy Spirit, you don't have to ask. It, this is you. This is your people, your souls. You go for it, right? There are things there are things to do and places to go. This resurrection life you receive from God is not a timid, grave tending life. Uh, can I say this to you right now? I need to speak this because Mark and I were just talking about this the other day. Do you notice that with all the rain we got, which praise God, great for the rain, it brought all the flies in the world and the weeds? Right? And it's like, how do we take care of this? How are we going to get rid of all these flies? How are we gonna, and you know what God, Mark, I told you I was asking God. I was just like, Lord, there's something about it. Here's what God told me. Stop worrying about the weeds. I didn't call you to pull weeds. I called you to harvest. Then I'm like, well, God, if I'm harvesting, who's pulling the weeds? He said, don't you think I got enough people in the kingdom that I can use to pull the weeds? Leave the weeds alone and go harvest. In fact, he said, and even before you can harvest, plant seed. Amen. So you can. Come on. Come on. There it is. Right there. So I'm telling you right now, Daniel, don't worry about your weeds, brother. Don't worry about it. God's going to take care of it. If he brought you the rain to give you green, he's also going to bring a fire to remove the weeds. Amen. And I don't know, Daniel, I'm not picking on you. That just God wanted me to speak that to you. So I hope that encourages you. Don't worry about, guys, they're here, but God just pulled them out so they'd be exposed. Right. Now we know where they are, yeah. right? Yeah. But he's going to do something about it. Amen. I just need to go tend to the grass. Hallelujah. So, Mark, that's the word. That's what he's given me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And listen to this. He says, this resurrection life you receive from God is not a timid, grave tending life. It's a venture, it's a venturous, expectant, greeting God with a child like, what's next, Papa? I'm coming here tonight doing that. In fact, when God got done with me, I walked out at 6 o'clock this morning out of my office. I said, what next, Papa? He says, let me tell you, George, just show up and you'll see. Go to church. So I did. And I got to see some neat things. I got to hear some great things of what God's doing in you. But he's not done. There's more. Yes. Guys, let me tell you, if you're thinking about tonight and you're going, Pastor, I just, I don't know. Let me tell you, that the minute you say, I don't know, is the moment you need to come. Amen. Come on, Lisa. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. And guys, let me tell you this. And, and write down the lies you've been told because we're going to shred those too. We're going to shred lies. No more. No more. Why? Because my God is able Amen. to do exceedingly, abundantly, but what I, more than what I could ever ask or imagine. It's time that we live like that. Lisa, come on. I love that. I love it. 
Anybody excited about maybe coming tonight? I'm showing up. I'm telling you right now, God's doing some stuff. And I don't know what he has for you, but I just hope you show up so I can watch it. And I hope you'll come and watch what God's going to do to me. And to anyone who comes tonight, and it's just the beginning. I'm just telling you right now, we're going to fall so in love with God that that's all we're going to do is love God and then tell people all about God. That's what's going to be what we all do. It's going to be crazy. Maybe God is mixing some things up in your life so that you'll let go of things you thought you needed and now let God be all you need. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. God's spirit touches our spirits and confirms who we really are. We know who he is and we know who we are. He is our father and we are his children. Amen? Amen. Did I ask you guys to write down uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11? No. Just write down 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11. And I'm going to close with this verse. Which, by the way, I had written it down in here. And guys, all I can tell you is it's in either Matthew 5 or 6. Read your Bible and you'll find it. <laughs> Pastor's cheating on it a little bit. I believe it's in chapter 5 in the 30s. Mark, you might even know it. It might be able to help me on this one. But here's what Jesus said. He said, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. Mark's telling me Matthew chapter 5. You need to hear that. It's going to prepare you for tonight. Those who hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. And can I tell you, you got what you needed to be filled with. He's here, the Holy Spirit. Amen. But the Holy Spirit wants you to know him more. And he wants to tell you more about God. And guys, I'm telling you tonight, he's going to do it. I think we're going to have a wonderful time of, of feasting and uh, together. But then we're going to get into that praise and worship. And oh my gosh, I just, like I said, I don't care how hard someone's heart is. Bring him. Watch what God can do. And if they won't come, you come. You come expecting and anticipating. That's right. Because God did his part today. He told you about where the power is That's right. and who it is. And it's yours for the asking. Amen. Father, we just thank you so much for what you're doing. I thank you for God taking us through this series, helping us to know your Holy Spirit better than we ever have before, God. Lord, forgive us for the times that, Lord, we haven't recognized who is in the room. When we haven't given the Holy Spirit his due place and reverence, God, because when we don't do that, we're not giving you due place to reverence. But I thank you, God, that you love us so much that you teach us these things. You show us these things. And God, get us through this day. Lord, you called for tonight. This is what you said to do. We're going to do it, God. And God, we're coming expecting. We're coming ready. We're coming ready to Lord, throw away, cast out, burn, destroy, drive out. God, we will not be the ones destroyed. We will not be the ones driven out. We will not be the ones depressed. We will not be the ones disturbed. We will not be the ones without faith and hope. God, we have you, and we have your spirit. So we give you glory and honor and praise for, God, what you're going to do. And we're going to be ready, God. We're going to be ready. All the church said together, amen. Carrie, if you want to come up with me real quick.